Good morning, good morning, good morning again. Another wonderful and beautiful and glorious day. I'm a little crooked. Let me uncrook it myself just a tiny bit. You may be wondering, what is this beautiful prayer shawl that Matthew has on his body? Well, it's not. It's a blanket because it's cold in here. <laughs> That's all. It's keeping me a little bit warm because my uh, air conditioning or heating unit likes to go on a clean cycle. Uh, and it seems to pick the moment I come out to pray to start the clean cycle. So it wasn't heating at all. But God is good. Amen. Let's jump back into the word today. In Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1, you might have heard this before. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I want to look at that word now there because I've heard people uh, focus on that word now, but it doesn't necessarily mean now from what I read. I have a little note written in my Bible that says it could also mean but, or moreover, and, so, now, etc. It's basically a conjunction. It is pulling the previous verses from chapter 10 into the intro into chapter 11 and, and how they separated it when they translated it. So that says, let's go back. If, if you were translated it moreover, you'd go moreover, hmm, or therefore. That's a common one. When it says therefore, you want to go back and find out why it said there, for. What's it there for? So we're going to go back to Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 32, where it said, Remember the former days after you were enlightened, in which you endured a great struggle of afflictions. That tells us one thing. That tells us if you believe, now the gospel is power. It's power for salvation, for deliverance. He gives us power to live a victorious life. But it's very clear here that it's not just a bed of roses. It doesn't say after you were enlightened, you, you elevated, you levitated from the ground, and you had a uh, 25 years of glorious bliss and no troubles at all. It says, no, you endured a great struggle, struggle of affliction. Affliction doesn't mean you're beat down and impoverished. It means that the devil basically tries to come against you. So you need to stand back, stand in faith against him. In part, it says in verse 33, you are made a spectacle both by reproaches and afflictions. And in part, you became companions of those who were so abused. They were all persecuted. For you had compassion on me in my chains and joyfully endured the confiscation of your property, knowing that you have a better and an enduring possession for yourselves. Or excuse me, knowing that you have in heaven a better and an enduring possession for yourselves. You know, if you lose anything, for Christ's sake on earth, you can do it with joy. If things are taken from you, I know sometimes it's it can be quite frustrating if someone steals or deceives or lies, you know, and steals stuff from you personally or from groups that you see. They're oppressed. You can be like, that's evil. It's bad, right? But it says they joyfully endured it. They didn't joyfully let it happen. They endured it. They they joyfully, uh, I don't know, I guess that is allowing it to happen. They joyfully put up with it. They tolerated it. It was happening. They didn't call for it. They didn't ask for it. They didn't deserve it. But they endured it, right? It was bad. But they did it with confidence. Confidence in what? That they have in heaven a better and an enduring, a lasting possession for themselves. They were looking to a reward. <clears throat> and then it says... Therefore, do not throw away your confidence. If you've endured something, if you've had to stand through some hard times, stand in faith, don't throw away your confidence because that very confidence, it says here, will be greatly rewarded. That word rewarded comes down to wages. God pays you wages for your confidence, for your bold, constant speaking of faith. Wages. You know, I don't ever think, I, we, we are basically taught to and don't want to think that God owes us anything. Because really, it's all by grace. It's by grace through faith, right? But he rewards us. He has rewards. We do things, 
and he actually has rewards piled up. You know, he sets things up, I think. I think God's the big setup God. He likes to set things up. It's like, I'm going to reward them real good when they obey me here. Oh, I'm just ready. You know, he's got that, you know, the old cartoon bag of money behind his back. And he's like, <laughs> all they got to do is obey. I got it all set up. And legally and through my heart, I could give them a big blessing. Just obey me. I love my kids. Therefore, do not throw away your confidence, which will be greatly rewarded. For you need patience, so that after you have done the will of God, you will receive the promise. You got to keep on going on. Keep on keeping on. For in a little while, he who is to come will come and will not wait and will not linger. Now the just shall live by faith. This is how we get into faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who draw back to destruction. Say, I am not of those who draw back to destruction. <clears throat> no, but we, I, you, we are the, of those who have faith to the saving of the soul. Then it says, so, therefore, moreover, faith is the substance of things hoped for evidence of things not seen having faith and persistence persistence on the word and the promises of god amen be blessed